Okay, well, I guess um, just talking to Ashton about poor old Adam Selwood had a, a job on his hands to in the pace department. Um, must have felt at times like uh, the rush goal goal side was um, was hard to contain with Carlton. Oh yeah, they were pretty quick out there, and it's uh, it's once they're up and going, they're pretty hard to run down. So I felt for Adam, but I was on the receiving end a couple of times myself, just trying to chase him down. So it's a tough gig. When they've got guys like that, what's you just have to try and push them as far up the ground as you can and, and stay, give yourself a couple of yards yeah. on the goal side. Is that the technique you do? Yeah, definitely. And just try and do your early body work. And, you know, if they can leave their run to the latest second, then, you know, you might give yourself a chance. Um, yeah, just yeah, early body work's the key to try and prevent them from getting those easy runs. Is, is there a feeling, obviously, you've only played a few games, so you yeah. probably haven't played on all the small balls, but is yeah. there a feeling that those two are the. The, the quickest going around? Oh, they're the quickest by far that I've played against. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know it's early in the week. Have you spoken to Darren about whether he's likely to play against Port? I mean, obviously, his inclusion or exclusion is a pretty important makeup of your defence. Yeah, it will be. Um, yeah, if he doesn't play, it'll be a big loss. But I, he's walking around fine downstairs at the moment, so I'd be, uh, I'd be saying he'll be ready to go. Was that pretty inspirational to see him stay out there when he pretty much couldn't lift his arm? Oh, absolutely. Trying to take marks where he couldn't lift his arm and uh, even just blocks and things like that where he didn't even shirk the issue. So uh, he's a great leader. Just on the a lot of the goals that came from, you know, about the centre line win, yeah. the press that you guys put in place, mm. uh, and they just run off that. You, you sought to rectify. Um, those errors, or do you stick to your game plan? Oh, the team meeting will be, uh, you know, we'll have a good look at all that stuff um, that's coming up later, the Salvo, so, and then we'll try and implement it during the week and just fine tune the little things where we went wrong because we're not far off, but we're, uh, we're getting there. Do you back yourselves with, with a lot of things and, and the way things are going, have been going this season, or how much do you need to change and, you know, being one and three? Yeah, oh, there's no loss of belief. I, uh, I still think we've, we've, got the, we've got the team to do it, and, uh, yeah, I think we're we're still around the mark. How are you finding life in your second full year at AFL level? Yeah, oh, it's good. It's a tough battle to try and get a game. It's a it's a pretty strong you know side, and there's blokes starting to come back from injury now. So you've really got to hold your form and yeah, do your best each week. Are you learning much from guys like Darren Glass? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Darren Glass, Shannon Hearn's a big help. He plays on those small forwards as well, and Adam and Butts. Um, yeah, everyone's there to try and make you better, a better footballer. And if you're a better footballer, you have a better side. You change your number during the off-season. Gary Ablett yeah. said uh, a couple of weeks back that he decided not to take his father's yeah. number, but you have. Can you tell us the reason why? Oh, because I'm not Gary Ablett. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I, I always wanted to. It was always a dream of mine to wear the 14. And, um, yeah, just trying to do it proud now. Move a bit quicker than the old man as well, in the 14, is that right? Yeah, but he kicked a bit better. <laughs> Um, the Port Adelaide forward line, they've got obviously got a few new guys to look at, but guys like little Nicky Mead and yeah. um, West obviously in great form. Um, what are you expecting from them? Oh, they're going really well. Um, you know, four and zero. You, you will have a real close look at them this week and find out you know what they're doing right and. You know, Need, I heard from the pre-season that he was pretty quick and he'll be like these blokes So, on the weekend. So, we'll, um, yeah, we'll have a good look at them and see how we can beat them. You have to take the stuffing out of them a bit early, you think, this week, Jacob, like four and four and zip, yeah. and they're going to be playing at home. A, a good start, maybe even more important than normal, take the crowd out of it and try and take a little bit of the wind out of the sail. Oh, definitely trying to get a good start against Port Adelaide. You know, four and zero, their confidence will be high. You know, they've got nothing to lose playing against us. So to get, to have a good start would be a um, probably a big focus of ours. Yeah. Is it do some of the lesser lights in the team too? Have you talked about maybe having to lift a bit? You you do have players out, like you've got four or five key players yeah. out. Do you have to try and keep your win loss respectable until you get your 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 full team back? Is there sort of a any sort of concerted push to make sure you you know you? Your younger players lift a little bit to get you over the line and keep keep you in the hunt for a good spot in the eight at the end of the year. Yeah, I think we're uh, pretty happy with you know this, the side that's in. We, we believe that uh, any 22 that take the park um, are ready to play you know, West Coast football. So um, there's no real concerted push by a young player to play out of his skin and 
and win the match for us. But it's just about playing our roles. We've all got a role. And if we all do that, then we'll give ourselves every chance.